Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. And it's good to see each one here tonight. We say God bless you really good. Just lean over to your neighbor and yell at him. Tell him I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and if you would repeat after me and say, This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. One more time. This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering tonight. Amen. We want to mention some prayer requests tonight so we don't forget. But uh, we had a, a, a request tonight from Michael Medina. Uh, he's been diagnosed with cancer, and so we need to remember Michael tonight. Uh, Bruce, uh, they have uh, canceled his surgery. They're not going to do it this Friday, so we need to pray for Bruce that they will do the surgery. Amen. We're going to pray that they get the job done. Amen. Uh, anyone else tonight? Uh, urgent requests? Let's remember uh, any other requests tonight. Anybody? Do we have any other urgent needs? How about Johnny and his car? Did they get it fixed? Or no? Let's remember Johnny and his car. Who else? If somebody else's car was broken. Michael and Sylvia. Michael and Sylvia. Now? Let's remember Michael's car. And then someone else? Any? Okay, all right. Uh, Josephine. Okay, let's remember this request, Sister Merlin. Traveling mercies for Elisha and the children. Amen, Leah. Let's believe God, let's trust God, and let's let the power of the Holy Spirit flow in this place to the people that need help tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, we believe in your power and your glory. Lord, we send the word of healing to these that need a touch in their body. Lord, we lift up Michael Medina tonight. Father God, we send the word of healing to his physical body. God, we lift up Bruce tonight. God, we send the word. Father, let this thing uh, work in Jesus' name. Lord, for surgery or healing or whatever you need. Lord, for these in the hospital, God, we pray for your mercy, God. We send the word. Lord, we lift up Elisha on the highways, Lord. We pray, God, that you will be with her and keep
keep her safe and take her there safely and bring her back safely, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up uh, Johnny tonight, Father God, and we miss him so much and we pray, God, help him to get that car fixed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, by your mind and by your power, Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we lift up the other Michael, Lord, that needs help in his car. Father God, touch him. Minister to their needs tonight in Jesus' precious name. Lord, you said in your word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, we lift up every other urgent need tonight. God, you are a great and a mighty God. Lord, we can call upon your name and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We send the word, Father God. Let your blessings and your anointing be with us. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Bless the music, Lord. Bless the spoken word. Bless in our service tonight. Stir up the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Thank you for the victory tonight. And Lord, we ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give him one more clap offering tonight. And let's praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Liam.
Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in your patience you possess your soul. And yet you really have to develop that. Amen. And if you don't know how you get it, tribulation worketh patience. Amen. You can't get it any other way. I wish you could. If you could, I'd go get it the other way. Amen. <laughs> tribulation worketh patience. It also says be patient in tribulation so you can work on it yourself. Amen. So be patient and, and let the Lord work it in your life and you'll see him do some great things. Amen. Amen. The one thing that I know that I have to do is stay in the place that God has placed me and so I understand that and we're going to do that and as long as God will allow me to, we'll keep the ship rolling, amen, in the right direction, amen. So we're going to see God do some great things and I want to see it. And here, even now, we get a, just about a testimony every single week, at least one of somebody got healed or delivered or set free or whatever, so... It's working anyway. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and uh, receive our evening offering. Uh, anything you can do to help would certainly be appreciated. We say God bless you tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight once again for this offering. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Lord, we ask you to meet the need tonight. Lord, we look to you for all things. Lord... Uh, as, as a handmaid to her mistress, you said, that as, 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 as a young man to his boss or to his father, so we look to you tonight. Lord, we feel that that is more urgent tonight than ever. We need your power and your glory. So we ask you to bless this offering. Bless the people, Father. Return it to them some way. And we'll thank you for it. We ask it tonight in your name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said Amen. If you have an offering, please bring it to the storehouse of the Lord. You know, I heard a, a country western song, and the song said, I had it right, but I got it wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> he said, I had it right, but I got it wrong. Amen. Old country gentleman. Amen. It's like the man said, I don't make mistakes. I thought I did once, but I was wrong. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We have just a few announcements tonight. Uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up on Monday uh, on uh, the 28th from 4 to 6 o'clock all through the week next week. Uh, we're looking forward to our children coming and being here. Please pray for our children. Uh, we have uh, lots of things, uh, events com coming up for them. But for the next week, it's going to be special, and we'd like to minister to the children, and we may get a chance to minister to the adults as well. So let's pray for them. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, coming up, amen, in uh, August the 17th, the hunters are going to be with us on August the 17th. We want to remember to pray for them. And then I have some other people that are going to come in August and September. So let's pray for the events. Carlos and Julie will be coming in September and October. And the lady we had last week, her name is Carol Dickey. She's coming in October and November. So we're looking forward to having her again as well. But let's pray for all of our services so that the Lord will have his way. Amen. Amen. Let's remember all of our children too. Praise the Lord. Amen? All right, if you have your Bibles tonight, if you will turn with me, please, to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43.
Praise the Lord. If it's all right, Margaret, would you ask the blessing on the Lord tonight? This is a very familiar passage of scripture, but I wanted to read some tonight. Now, verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee, since thou wast precious in my sight, and hast been honorable, I have loved thee. Amen. And have loved thee, therefore, Will I give men for thee and people for thy life? Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations of, be gathered together and let the people be assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there it was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who will let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans whose cry is in their ships. We're going to stop right there. Um, this is a passage of scripture that Isaiah is speaking to the people. And God is speaking to Israel. And once again, um, for Israel's sake, um, I don't know why it is, but I even see it today that the history of, of Israel and the history of Christians is up and down, up and down. They, have, they, they live on the mountain sometimes, they do really well. And then they backslide and they're down in the valley in different places and then they get back up on the mountain. Uh, God, His plan for us wasn't for that to take place. But unfortunately, Christians don't always do what's right all the time. Hello. That sometimes they serve the Lord and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do what they're supposed to and sometimes they don't. And so God is trying to present to the believers to be consistent amen and in this part of uh, this passage of scripture god is is trying to bring to the people an idea that he is faithful that he doesn't leave you when you're in trouble he doesn't leave you alone he will not 
depart from you as long as you are open to God you can be delivered as long as you will surrender your life to God and you will pray and be submissive to the Lord I don't care how far away you get you can always come back amen you can always get restored you can always be blessed amen and in here not everyone and as God using these expressions not every one of these people he's talking about necessarily did bad things the three Hebrew children got thrown in the fire but they were not burnt they were in the fire but the only thing that burned on them was their the bindings the rope that held them uh, others amen when when they came through the difficulty amen the whether it's water or afflictions or whatever even though they went through them they were not harmed or hurt by them but God gave his grace to allow them to go through the situation so that they could get victory amen God brought us amen out into this world amen so that we could learn his power and his glory it's really unfortunate amen uh, as from what I can see among people today is that they don't learn the lessons from the Lord that they need to and far too many people are not taught correctly and so they don't know how to go through a trial they do not know how to cast all of their care upon the Lord and so people carry their burdens they they literally take them with them 24 hours a day God did not want us to carry the burden 24 7 he wanted us to cast all of our care upon him because he cares for us so it takes a person to be able to take the problem and give it to God and walk away knowing that God will take that problem and bring a solution to it amen we we are we're coming into difficult times we're coming into more and more difficult things I preach it almost every week you turn the TV on and now there's storms and all kinds of stuff going on in our nation at the same time they got fires in the Northwest they've had tornadoes and they've got other stuff going on and God is trying to capture our attention and if we're not careful we're going to play around too long amen like Samson did amen and end up plowing amen like an ox amen instead of walking the walk and talking the talk and serving the Lord amen like we're supposed to amen we're going to end up in more trouble than than what we can get out of amen God amen said here that he would be with us when the storm hit amen when the trouble arrives that God is going to be with us he gave people for our life and he sacrificed other people so we could be here tonight amen in one of the Psalms it said a thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand in our right hand but it would not come nigh us somebody's got to get Pentecostal one of these days amen and declare the fact that God still has power amen is able to deliver and set the captive free amen when the storm hits amen that's all right God's still with us amen we haven't de he hasn't departed from us amen hello amen if God departed from you you'd be in a world of hurt amen that would mean the devil amen could have his way in anything he wanted to do and I'll guarantee you the first thing he'll do to you is kill you amen hello if he could get to you come on how many times has he tried to kill you already <laughs> I know it's not the first time come on he's taking shots at me how many times just in your automobile driving has the devil taken a shot at you while you drive amen hello amen these these are things amen um, I, I God would God would give me grace tonight I know people do not think that these things are going to hit America but they're going to hit America I know people think that we're going to just keep living the way we've lived for all these years amen and one of these days we're going to wake up and we're going to realize that the lifestyle we once had is gone and now we are faced with a life of prayer just to get through the day 
We're going to be faced with a situation that if we don't know how to talk to God and we don't know how to communicate and we can't get God's help, amen, we're going to be in trouble. They are going to pass a law that's going to say you can't buy or sell unless you take the mark of the beast. And we as Christians cannot take that mark. And so before that day, you better learn how to pray in your food. Amen. That God would bring you a blessing. Can I get a witness? Amen. That you can live in this world. Amen. No matter what the trouble is and have peace with God. You need it tonight because of the difficulties that are out there. Amen. Hallelujah. I do not understand everybody. I do not understand Christians. But I get on the internet and I see organizations right now. I didn't know it. Uh, this week I got on there. There's one huge organization that they're all fighting against each other in the same organization. Now, well, you can guess what it's about. It's about money. They have radio stations all over the United States and the world. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars available, amen, that they receive from those radio stations and other churches that are involved in there. Instead of sending that money to headquarters, they want their share of it. Hello. There go legal battles in their own organization. I'm telling you the truth, y'all now listen to me, it won't be long before you're going to read in the headlines that this organization doesn't exist anymore because it's totally done, brought down to nothing because they all fought against each other. Amen. Over money. Amen. Absolutely. Come on. It's amazing to me why somebody would fight over money when you got the power of God I read this week and I was reading in here and, and I, it's, it's in the Bible and it said why are you taking your brother to the law to the court before the judge don't you have spiritual people in the church that can discern in your problems and situations to give you an answer isn't there a spiritual person among you that can solve your problem, but yet you take your brother to court before the judge and the unbelievers, and they look at you and you're Christians, and you're fighting against each other? They are. This has been a while back, but I saw a testimony of a man who used to be a pastor, and he became a lawyer. If you can believe this, you might want, want to fasten, fasten your seatbelt. But he became a lawyer so he could help Christians get divorced. So he could make sure that people got the right amount of stuff. 50-50. Can I get a witness? Amen. Not one word about bringing rest to resolution to the marriage, but just let him go ahead and get divorced, but make sure he got his 30%. Can I get a witness? Right here, right here in this area, years ago when we were about to have to sell the church, and I mean have to, they were going to almost did the eminent domain thing. I talked to some people in, in, that had knowledge of the airport and some lawyers. And one lawyer, one man, and three lawsuits made nine hundred thousand dollars on the airport and the government. Hello, three lawsuits. The church has got so much, but he got one third of every settlement. Nine hundred thousand dollars is what this lawyer made by breaking up, amen, and attacking the airport and getting, I know he got the church money, but the church is not supposed to sue the airport. <laughs> oh. Emma, Emma, you, can, you can argue with me if you want to. It said we're not supposed to take people to court unless you have no other choice. 
You don't have any other choice. And now they fight against each other. And I don't know what's going to happen to the body of Christ if they don't start reading the Bible. If you don't start praying and reading the Bible and having confidence in God, you're going to end up fisticuffs on the sidewalk and they're going to take you to jail. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Amen. I, well, I don't know what happened to the church. What happened to Christians? What happened to doctrine? You listen to people on the television and their doctrine is nothing like what it's in the Bible. It's, you can't find it. You, you can look on every page. It's not in here. And they're doing things and people are saying, why don't you preach what someone else preaches? And I tell them, I can't find it in the Bible. And they say, you're old-fashioned, you're a dinosaur. I am because it said that Jesus Christ doesn't ever change. If he came today, I, I spoke last week about it. Somebody said if Jesus came today, he'd change his mind on what he said when he was here 2,000 years ago. I said he's already been here and he's not going to change his mind. If he comes back and he will, he's going to have the same opinion as when he left. You better be righteous. Without holiness, nobody is going to see the Lord. Nobody. Amen. You better get saved. You better get down on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Hello? The people are in trouble. I'm having difficulties in dealing with people. The Bible gives us plain statements, and we shared them many times, that we're not supposed to associate with people that say that gain is godliness. We are not supposed to associate with them. Hello? And if you look at what's on TV, that eliminates a whole bunch of those guys that's up there. Amen. And that's, the Bible said we're not even supposed to associate with much less give them money. You're not even supposed to talk to them. And I, I got to, I got to read this this week and about this organization. About taking a brother to the law. And I know people that have been divorced and I know people that have had legal battles and that sort of thing. But I'm talking about Christians taking Christians to court. Sometimes you have no alternative. If somebody takes you to court, you got to go. And I understand that. you got to go. But when you have a choice, when you have a choice not to take your brother-in-law, why can't this organization take it behind the closed doors, get in some kind of room, and iron out their differences and get it fixed? Well, we want the money. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. We'll give everybody the same amount. No, my church is bigger. I need more money than Brother Joe over here or Brother Smith. I want more. Hello. Hello. Well, what, it, what happened to the people? Amen. Here's this big pot of money with hundreds of millions of dollars in it, and they can't leave it alone. That money's calling them. That money's saying, you can have me if you'll just come, go to court, get rid of your friends, amen, take the money. Hello? Nothing about prayer, nothing about God, nothing about let's do this right. I want the money, give it to me. I'm going to take it. If I can, if I have to, I'll pay the judge off, amen, I'll get the money. I'm having, I'm having dilemmas, and yet in one way I realize I know where my answer lies. I know I have to be consistent in my Christian walk. It's what people are not today, because they waver in their opinion all the time. I need to be consistent in my prayer life. I need to pray every day. I need to either read or hear the Word of God every day. 
My soul is depending on whether I do what's right or not according to this word. And yet so many people are falling by the wayside. I'm stunned. People are living a terrible lifestyle and they go to church every week. They hate their brother. They're taking them to law. They'll steal their money. They'll steal their wife or husband. They'll steal whatever they can. And then they go to church and say, Hallelujah. I can't, I can't take it. What happened to the Christian? Amen. I got to, I got, I'm talking to some people about it this week. Jonathan Edwards wrote the, the sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And I know it's a famous sermon and it went all over the world, but who did he preach it to first? He preached it to his own church first. If you want to read some, go home and read Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. You can smell the smoke. He preaches fire of hell so hot. Amen. And he preached that sermon to his own church first. What kind of church did he have? Oh, y'all not listening to me. It's humanity out there. And they watered down the gospel so much that you can do whatever you want and be a Christian. I want you to know you can't do it. You need to get saved. Amen. You need Jesus to wash you from your sin. And you need to live a Christian life every day and pray every day and worship every day. Or you're going to be in danger of the judgment. <laughs> Hello. Hallelujah. I don't understand it, but you can read the stories we showed them here one summer, every Sunday night. God's generals, you can get a book, you can get the DVDs, and they'll show you what happened to different famous people. Tell you what happened to them. Not everyone ended bad, but a number of them did. A number of them ended up living a sinful life at the end of their life and disobedient to God. As bad or worse as Solomon ever did. Hello? Hello? I don't know what happened to them. Something happened to them because they were used by God in such a great way in the beginning and then they ended up doing stupid stuff. One man built a golden altar and said, you can't get saved unless you come and pray at his golden altar. Well, does that golden altar look like Jesus? Hello, does it act like Jesus? Does it bleed like Jesus did? No. Only the blood of the cross, amen, can save you, amen. Jesus, the son of the living God, is the only one that can save you. I don't care if you have 57 golden altars. None of it's going to help you do anything to get saved or be blessed unless you know the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If you're a billionaire, so what? Who stinking cares, amen? Are you saved? Do you have just an ounce of the love of God living in you, amen? People can go to your church service and they can't get within a hundred yards of you. You got no mercy and love. You splash water on people. Amen. As you drive out of the parking lot. <laughs> Not going there. Amen. You know, I, sh I share this all the time. But I did not grow up in a Christian home. I did my parents were not Christians but you know if I did something like was rude to somebody or if I ever thought about stealing anything or doing anything like that I mean I'll tell you I got a trip to the woodshed and they weren't even saved hello they would take me and I mean they give me the what for can I get a witness amen you were rude to Aunt Helen or whatever boom 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 won't you be rude to Aunt Helen never again I won't never again hello I told you not to do that y'all didn't get a spank and I did amen my dad took his belt off and let me have it <laughs> yes sir come on anybody <laughs> come on 
We got the what for? Whack! Don't you talk like that to me? I was remember one <laughs> one morning. My mother asked my brother to go to the to the dairy, which is only a couple blocks from our house, to get some things for breakfast. Some people were coming, and my brother told my mother, "No, I'm not going." And so I was just sitting in the living room watching TV, and unbeknownst to me, my dad was getting dressed. It's not good. <laughs> that was not good, amen. And my dad got dressed, and before he put his belt in his pants, he took it off, amen, or didn't take, take it off. He just rolled it up, and he let my brother have it. He began to wail on him in the living room, amen. And my brother decided to go to the dairy and get some food. Can we get a witness, amen? Yeah, he did. He changed his mind. I don't think I'll go. Yeah, I believe I'll go. Amen. I learned. I tell him, my mama, no, never. Amen. I'm going to get into trouble saying no to my mother or my father. Amen. So I, uh, I don't know where people are going with their Christian walk. But I want you to think about a couple things tonight. Number one. If you do not make heaven your home, you are going to be eternally separated from God in the lake of fire. Nobody can get you out of it. Nobody can retrieve you from it. I didn't write it, so don't throw your songbook at me. I didn't put it in there. Amen. The false prophet and the beast are going to be thrown alive into the lake of fire. I don't know how that's going to work, but it's not going to feel too good. Can I get a witness? Amen. They're going to be thrown alive into the lake of fire. Hell and death are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Every ungodly person is going in there, and that's it. That's the final judgment for the sinner. That's what Jonathan Edwards was preaching about, the final judgment. Not right now, thank God, it's not tonight. If it was tonight, there'd be a lot of people in trouble tonight, amen. The final judgment isn't tonight, thank God, we can get it fixed up, hallelujah. We can get restored, we can start praying the prayer of faith, we can do what God called us to do, amen. Hallelujah. One day, if the Lord grants me the grace, I'm going to write a book of all the trouble I've been in. One of these days, if God lets me, I'm going to tell the world of all the stuff that Jesus got me through. Hello. Every time I got into financial trouble or legal trouble or sick or whatever I want to tell the world you know what God told me to come to this place and it hasn't been easy but I know God told me to come and I stood my ground and I want you to know like the Apostle Paul out of them all the Lord delivered me out of every devil every affliction every financial disaster every sickness every battle I want you to know that Jesus has delivered me amen and the reason I'm here tonight is because the power of the Spirit Spirit of God has sustained me and it's not about having a lot of people it's about going where God told me to go and doing what God told me to do and saying what God told me to say that's why this still works amen even if we don't have a lot of people the Spirit of God is moving in this house tonight and that's more than a lot of people have with a house full wow. hallelujah amen you have a choice. People are choosing money over the power of God. And I chose the power of God over money. Hello. You can count it all day. My wife sees those people up there at the college all the time. They have millions and some of them are billionaires. But it can't save them. It doesn't help them when they get sick. Are oh, y'all not listening to me? They can drive a car that's more expensive than your house. Can I get a witness? Amen. But it won't save them. <laughs> I'd rather have Jesus. 
I'd rather have that power and that anointing and that blessing. Hello? This morning, as we were in prayer, I was reminded, we know this scripture, but I was just reminded in prayer, that His mercy is in the heavens and His faithfulness reaches to the clouds. His mercy goes that high. And his faithfulness reaches to the cloud. You think I'd trade that in on something? I'm not going to trade that in. If I get into trouble, y'all know this to me tonight. Even if I flat out mess up, I know i got a God that's merciful. And I can run into him. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous can run in and be safe. Amen. I know tonight, even if I fail terribly, I know there's a strong tower in the name of Jesus where I can go in and be safe tonight. And he'll forgive me and protect me and bless me. But he won't help me if I steal a bunch of money and hide it amen and take advantage of people and not repent and not share what I'm supposed to can I get a witness amen I'll get no blessing I'll get no mercy I'd rather have the mercy amen 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 it's exactly what it says I don't know where people are headed but I've thought about this my whole life. Where do I want my soul, where do I want it to end up at? What, what, what is my responsibility? My responsibility is to follow Jesus. It's not to do anything else but to do what God called me to do, period. Amen. Doesn't mean I'll get paid for doing it doesn't mean I'll get a lot of money or everything will work nice or whatever. Sometimes I can do 99 things right and one thing wrong and people will remember the one thing I did wrong. They got it on video too, amen, from every angle, amen. There's a, a great baseball player I love to watch. He played for the Kansas City Royals. He's in the Hall of Fame now. His name is George Brett. Fabulous fielder, great hitter, great player. One day he hit a home run, and somebody came out, amen, with a tape measure. Never did it before, and measured that he had pine tar up on the bat a little higher than it's supposed to be. And the umpire called them out. You never see him come out of the dugout so quick. He was screaming and hollering at that umpire. He was yelling at him. They had to stand between him and the umpire. I think he would have killed the umpire. Yeah, I, be, I think he'd have beat him to death or at least talked him to death, one of the two. But he was so mad and furious that he would that they call him out after he hit a home run. And he went on and on and on and on and on and on. And though he's in the Hall of Fame and he hit home runs and he helped win the World Series and he almost hit 400 for a season, guess what they remember him for? Yelling at the umpire, screaming at the umpire, threatening the umpire. That's what they remember this great player for. And I wish I could just get a little mercy out of all the people I prayed for. They've been in jail and did terrible things and unmerciful, whatever, been in my office. They even told me things they did. I don't even know what it was. Amen. They said it was a sin. I don't know what it was. Amen. But I've had to pray for people. I wish I could just get a little bit of that. Can I get a witness? Amen. Show a little bit of mercy anyway. I prayed for everybody else. I like to get a little bit of it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling the truth. I had people come in my office and tell me they did something and they were real sad and upset about it. I didn't know what it was. It was terrible. I cried and lamented in my office. But what, what is it? What did they do? Can't be good, I know. But what did they do? I don't understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophets had one of the hardest jobs of anybody I ever have known. Noah, his job. Moses, 
every one of them had trouble, trouble, trouble. Because they had to tell the people the truth. If we could have church tonight and I could just tickle your ears, we could just have a bunch of fun, jump up and down, and we could go home. But it isn't the truth. Your soul is being weighed in the balance tonight. When Belteshazzar, amen, took the king's wine cups, and I actually took the out of the house of God, they took them and they began to drink wine out of the holy vessels from the house of God. In the book of Daniel, an arm came out and wrote on the wall, Mini, Mini, Tinkle, Euphorsion. Hello. You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. And so the king wanted to know, what does that mean? Daniel said, another king is coming over here, amen, and they're going to kill you, and they're taking over your kingdom. <laughs> tonight, he said, tonight. Tonight's tonight, hello. They had the battle, the king died. Amen, God didn't like it using a holy vessel for just parting, amen. Hallelujah, amen. And I don't want to mess around with God. I don't know if you ever watched the weather or not. But I have great respect for weather. One storm can cause billions of dollars worth of damage. One storm. One tornado can ruin an entire city. One hurricane can do even worse. It can ruin several cities. God, God can do so much stuff that, I mean, He can make you, I mean, He's going to, in the end days, He's going to throw up the earth a hundred pound hailstones. That'll go through the roof of the building and through the floor and into the concrete below. Amen at a gazillion miles an hour, however high he throws them from, amen. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to be there, amen. Someone said, I'm moving to such and such a place and they're not going to hit me. They're going to hit everybody. <laughs> they're going to be, they're coming down, you're going to be, you better be living right, amen. As I began to think about these people, Amen, that in this organization, they're fighting against each other. It's not very far to where their whole organization is going to be destroyed. They already got several churches already that their organization is nothing. It's a cult now because they change all their doctrine. And, they, and they're not ever, from what I can gather, they're not ever going to get it back. And they're marching toward having a one world government, a one world church, and a one world currency faster than I even think that they can do it, they're running towards it. And I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's not going to be much longer to where this earth is going to be in so much trouble. Amen. Now, I don't know how they're going to get out of it without them. But the Bible says in Revelation, they're not going to repent. The plagues are going to come and they're not going to repent. It's going to, they're going to have the same stuff as Egypt had, amen, only worse. And they're not going to repent. They're going to be, amen, politically accepted in the people's eyes and they're going to die for it. What I would rather do is just be honest and tell God, you know what, I'm a sinner. I did it, I sinned, I disobeyed. Forgive me. If I got to go to jail the rest of my life, send me to jail, I want to go to heaven. Rather than lie about it and say, I didn't do it and now go prove it in court, amen. Can I get a witness and spend eternity in hell? Or in the lake of fire, that's really the end of all things. For the wicked. Get it straightened out now. I shared this before. When I went to Laverne, it was $4,000 a year to go there. Now it's $50,000 a year. 
And that's just in my lifetime. What's it going to be in another 40 or 50 years? 100,000 a year to go there? Who's going? Only rich people can go there. Who's got 50,000? That's $200,000 to go and get a college education. <laughs> I could. I'd be selling hot dogs. I'd be doing whatever. I can't. $50,000, I can't do that. The grace of God that I got to do what I did when I did it. And sometimes I think about it. If I had not made the decisions I did when I did. If I had not done what God wanted me to do. I could have missed out on the will of God for my life. I could have missed out on the very best. I could have missed out on pastoring. I could have missed out on helping people. I could have missed out on doing what God called me to do. Just by simply telling him no. I got to go do what I want to do. That by simply submitting to God and doing what he told me to do. That I'm here tonight by the grace of God. And his power and his mercy is upon me and upon this place. And every time we see God do great and mighty things and people are blessed. Why would we not want to do anything else? Amen. We may never be rich. But I'm telling you once you get out of your body and you start dancing on the streets of gold. You are going to be one happy person. Hallelujah. That you decided to do what what Jesus told you to do rather than to try to get you some money or manipulate or do something else you're going to be one happy person amen they're going to have to amen pull me off the chandeliers if they got any in heaven can I get a witness amen for the glory and the blessing that's going to be in that place amen hallelujah pastor Dan tells me and I, I know it's true about theology schools most of the people that's up there teaching them, amen, don't teach you the truth. And if they do teach stuff, they don't believe it. It's crazy. What happened? I read, last couple of weeks I've been reading up on John and Charles Wesley again, and upon uh, Jonathan Edwards and, and Charles Finney, some great men of God. I didn't know it. Charles Finney actually coined the phrase revival. He actually coined that phrase. He was the first one to use that expression when he did meanings. He coined that expression. And he also started the altar call, which I didn't know before 1820. They didn't do it. They argue about it now. I was reading in there, amen, in the, in the book about it, amen. Theologians argue about it now that there should be an altar call because they didn't do it before 1820. But I don't know what you're going to do about Romans 10, 9, and 10, where it said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you got to have an altar call. I don't know if you didn't have one before. It doesn't make it right. Can I get a witness? Amen. You need to get saved. You got to get born again. Amen. <laughs> You know, I love the study of the Word of God, but I hate to argue. And when I see debates on the Word of God, it always drives me crazy. Because some of these guys believe stuff that no one should believe and no one should teach. And they do anyway. And I don't know if they know anything any better or not. But it's not right. They don't believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe in the second coming. They don't believe in miracles, healing, nothing. They don't really believe Jesus was the Son of God. And they don't really believe He's raised from the dead. And they call themselves Christians. One man said, if you say, I'm not a Christian, I'll call you a liar. Well, you're not a Christian, you stupid idiot. Amen. You're a moron. you got to get saved. Amen. To be born again. Enter the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say this, and we've we got to close. There is going to be a group of people that's going to learn the, 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 the principles and oracles of God once again. They're going to come back to what it really means to be a Christian, and they're going to come back to the feet of Jesus, and they're going to come back to the cross, and they're going to come back to the things of God and begin to serve the Lord the way they're supposed to. 
And they're going to pray in line with the Word of God. We've been working at that a lot the last five years. And we're getting testimonies all the time. But they're going to pray in line with God's Word. And they're not going to worry about money. In fact, in the old, in, in a Minor Prophets Old Testament, it said that it's going to be the poor of the people. People that don't have much money are going to lean to God. A necessity, number one. But not only that, is they're going to learn how to pray and learn how to develop uh, their Christian life to where they don't need a lot of money. They just need to believe God. Amen. When Jesus was here, he didn't carry a bunch of money with him, but he did carry a lot of faith with him. He didn't carry a lot of material possessions, amen, but he did learn how to work the Word of God, amen, and miracle after miracle after miracle, amen, took place. Amen. You know, I don't know how many times we've had dinners around here. I, I, I don't know how many dinners we've had over the years. I don't know how many Christmas dinners and Thanksgiving dinners and picnics and feeding the poor and different things we've done. But we never had a dinner, amen, where we had at least 5,000 men and only five loaves and two fish. If somebody, amen, sent me out somewhere and there were at least 5,000 people out there and we had five loaves and two fish and they told me to feed them, I'm afraid I'd have a little bit of stress going on. Hello. Where's the KFC at around here? Amen. Anybody got about a hundred thousand dollars? Amen. To get us some chicken. To feed all these people. Amen. Some of them look like they could eat more than just a happy meal or whatever it is they serve there. KFC special. Amen. Hello. Jesus went out there like it was nothing. I want to. I want to get in to those places where the peace of God will abide with me and I know no matter what situation and here it said when I pass through the water he'll be with me when I, when I, when I get into trouble he'll be with me when, I, when I'm going through it I'm going to be blessed of the Lord I won't have to worry about it I'm not going to be troubled about it I'm going to be just fine there are days when I come to church and I don't know where people are at or what they're doing or how they're doing it but I'll guarantee at the end of the month I pay every bill they're all paid if seven of us show up or, or 70 I don't care how many we, we pay the bills I have a fit some some days amen I have no idea where it comes from but it gets here and I'm writing a check hallelujah write another check hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah it's blessed. <laughs> I like it. I know, I know lots of people that wouldn't do what I do. I know lots of preachers, unless they had a guarantee of so much money and so much stuff, they would not come in here. I know lots of preachers, if they had the trouble that I've had, they would not stay. They would have left a long time ago because of the difficulty it is in keeping things afloat. Amen. Some days you have people and some days you don't. Some days it works easy and some days you don't. But there's a lot of times where it's very difficult and it would be real easy to get on a sailboat and sail out of here. But that's not what God asked me to do. He told me to stay here and I have found that God answers my prayer. God answers the prayers of this church. There's a reason, y'all don't understand this, for Rock of Faith to be here. Amen. There's a purpose for our church and God God keeps taking care of us. Amen. God doesn't pay for something he didn't order. He ordered Rock of Faith to be here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He ordered it to be here. He ordered people to come and help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to have a fit. Amen. You sat in my seat, amen, some days you would cry writing the checks, amen, to pay the bills, amen. <laughs> oh, God. I remember one Monday, amen, 
I had enough money to pay everything but the mortgage. This was a lot of years ago when I first started. And I didn't know what I was going to do. But I knew I didn't have enough money for that. I had enough money to pay the other bills, the water, trash, and all that, you know, electricity. And they usually come due about the same time. And just about the time I got done with the regular part, I heard a knock on the door. So I went to the side door and, and opened the door, and the lady was there and said, I had some kind of settlement on insurance. Here's my tithe check. It was to the penny what I needed to pay the mortgage. Amen. I couldn't put a stamp on that quick enough to put it in the deposit to get it to the bank, and I paid the mortgage. Hallelujah. We didn't have anything left, but we got it paid. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I find that it's one of the reasons why I love the Lord. Is that he didn't he didn't tell me, Jess, I'm gonna send you to Rock of Faith. I'm gonna send you there. And everything is just gonna go smooth like peanut butter on bread. Can I get a witness? Amen. Everything is just going to go just so smooth for you. You're going you're gonna to have, it will be just so easy for you to do this. There will be no problems ever. And it will be like a skip in the park and you will have no trouble. <laughs> it can happen. We've had, we've had difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. And yet God has blessed us to be here. Amen. My wife likes to do this. I'll throw this in the We have to feed our dogs medicine. They have different things. I think heartworm and some other things. And some of the medicine, they don't like it at all. And if you know dogs, mostly they eat anything. They will eat anything. And my dogs do not like to eat their medicine. But if you take some peanut butter, a big scoop of peanut butter, scoop it on your finger and stick the pill in the peanut butter, them crazy dogs will eat that before they know what they're doing. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> and you can feed them anything. I mean, you can feed them anything after that. They'll lick that peanut butter like you can't believe. Amen. They'll eat their medicine. They have to take heartworm and they have stuff for fleas. And we uh, Actually, the flea stuff goes on the outside, but they got other stuff they have to take. And every so often, it's not very often, but every so often you have to give it to them. Amen. And, and, and I think about things in life and that this life was was meant for us to learn how to appreciate the Lord and if we had it easy all the time we would not be so thankful that we could amen even have a pulse tonight if we had wealth and money and we could do whatever we want to do and the Lord asked us to do something we would no way do it we tell him no we're going to the beach today hello we're going on a boat ride or a plane ride or going to Disneyland or going somewhere. We're going to have some fun today. But when you have to pray to get through the day, you will listen to what thus saith the Lord. When you got to pray and ask God to help you get through, you're going to change your attitude. And if you were brought up like I was, you will listen to your dad or you will regret not listening. Amen. Because you will go to the woodshed. Hallelujah. And I appreciate what the Lord's done for me. Amen. Hello. I'm thankful tonight. Amen. I couldn't do it on my own. But we're here tonight because of Jesus. Amen. And His mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Time had failed me to tell all the great things the Lord's done but just for our church if, if, if God allows me grace I'm going to write all the things that I know all the difficulties that we faced and overcome because of Jesus when we get to heaven I'm going to lay down at his feet and just, and just thank him so much for allowing us to be able to do what we do we are functioning in this world in difficulties when other people are not functioning we are doing things that other people are not doing because of Jesus. And if, you could, if we could ever get other people to see what blessing they would have if they would just get back into the will of God. 
what God would do for them if they would just start serving the Lord where he called them. Amen. I see people all the time walking past the supernatural looking for the spectacular. Walking past the will of God trying to look for something great. Miss the will of God for their life. People that could pastor in a little town or a little church walk right past it looking for some great big church that they can pastor. And right now there's a whole bunch of big churches that's just about ready to crash and burn. And one already did right here. And there's more that's going to happen. And this organization that they keep fighting, there's a whole bunch of churches, big ones that's going to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? We're going to take a moment to pray. Lord, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we've done our best to share what's on our heart tonight. And Lord, we thank you, number one, for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. And we thank you that you are with us, Lord. And that we have to stand our ground in difficult times and that you want us to. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to pour out your spirit yet again tonight. You said you would be with us, and I know you will. There are yet people that need your touch tonight. There are people that need you to move by your spirit on their behalf. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise and the glory. Thank you for your blessings tonight. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for being our Savior and granting us grace when we don't deserve it and we could never earn it. Thank you for your mercy. Forgive us for anything we've done that's not pleasing to you. Help us to stand our ground and to show you that we will fulfill what you called us to do. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the praise and the honor. We ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Anyone tonight, you would like prayer, would you come now and be glad to pray with you? Anyone at all? And we'll pray. Amen. Lord, would you stand with me tonight? We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. Do you enjoy this tonight? Say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to give it just a brief testimony. We've been praying to get this yard done over here. And uh, Jerry came yesterday to help us. And we got all the bark down yesterday. The front yard has actually really good eucalyptus bark on it. And then I got some, uh, we had a couple of the, the garden areas here on the side. I got stuff from Home Depot. So it's all taken care of. And now we can start working on the back part of the house. So I want to thank the Lord for that. Amen. Because that was a long, a long time coming. Amen. And that uh, actually the eucalyptus is really good because it's actually resistant to lots of insects. It's, it's really good, and then it smells good, and especially when it gets wet, will nice give off a nice scent. So we thank the Lord for that. Nice to, amen, have that done, and we're going to work on the back part of the, the house, the patio, and then the grounds, we're going to put in the red brick out in the back to have a patio. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen? Sister Mary Lee, would you dismiss us? Amen, please.